Hey, it's Tuesday morning. Um, I was just in my office and I was getting a bit antsy. And I thought, oh, I gotta go outside. I gotta go make, it's hot chalk o'clock at my house. The dog is barking. It's time to go outside. Uh, yeah, it's a bit chilly this morning, but listen, today is a super exciting day because this is the day that is the first evening that we're gathering for the Eating with the Seasons group. So we have a small group this time around, which is so nice. It gives us a chance to really dive into the material and answer anyone's questions as we're going through. And I wanted to share with you, uh, tonight we're going to be doing, there's extra recipes this time around because I couldn't choose. And I wanted to make sure that people felt cared for and looked after. That's what you get when you work with me. Like we make sure that you've got things uh, in place so that you can be successful and dinner can be a delicious offering. So tonight we've got four recipes. We're doing meat stock. We're doing Korean batch prep meat, like a really lovely Korean steak marinade. Uh, we are doing um, oh yeah, portobello stuffed mushrooms, which are perfect for this time of year, and a lovely vegetarian offering, uh, vegan in fact, for those who want to keep it such. And then the third one is miso creamed greens, which is just so great way to add greens to your diet and to feature really an abundant vegetable that is typically available in winter. It's one of the things that can grow super well in Alberta, and we have an abundance from our local suppliers. So we'll be talking about those recipes. We'll also be talking about meat stock and the difference between meat stock and bone broth, because there's a really monumental difference between the two, and some people will be better served by meat stock and others by bone broth, and why you may want to uh, figure out which one is the best one for you. So we'll be diving into that content tonight, but I also wanted to let you know, you know, as we go through these six weeks, if you're sitting on the fence and wondering whether or not you need to join us, First of all, of course you should, because what, is, or what are these weeks ahead of us? What is this whole world feeling like? Might I recommend if you have one thing to focus on? When I feel like the world is la 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 la, that sort of wildness, then I look to my kitchen as a grounding way uh, to, to connect with what it is I'm preparing, to connect me to the earth, connecting with nature, whether it's through food or through a walk in the forest or through making a cup of tea or the daily ritual of choosing what feeds you. This is actually the clarion call right now to help us get through what seems like a wild season. So as part of these six weeks, that we do, hi Carleen, as part of these six weeks that we do in Eating with the Seasons is we focus on this book, Full Moon Feast. I think it might look backwards to you because it does to me right now. So Full Moon Feast is such a great book. It's a book put together by Jessica Prentice and she's a cook uh, in the northeastern parts of the United States and she has a really wonderful way of looking at traditional cultures, First Nations knowledge um, and bringing it all together according to the 13 moons of the year. So we'll be talking about the snow moon, we'll be talking about the blood moon as part of this exploration through the winter eating with the seasons. But tonight, this is the piece, oh my. Yeah, old King Winter's coming through, can you hear him? Oh my God, guys, I gotta go make a hot chocolate. Okay, this is the little write-up that I'm gonna end tonight's uh, visit with. So I love this, so let this sit with you. Okay, whether or not you're joining us is fine, but just sit with this because this is what helps me in times like the wild ones we're currently moving through. On the snow moon, oh, hi. Look, it's a Russian olive leaf. Hmm, thanks, guy. I'll tuck you right in there. Okay. On the snow moon, may we keep in our hearts a vision of a group of villagers laboring together, singing a song while they keep their hands moving. May we feel inspired to experiment in our cooking, to try something new, and to use all six of our senses to guide us through the process. May we feel the sense of freedom and power that comes from being able to provide for ourselves. May we find the time to put up a batch of sauerkraut, bake a loaf of bread, or culture some yogurt. And may we welcome the coming winter, knowing that even if the ground is covered with snow or ice, we will be well-fed well fed in all ways. 
that's how we are going to wrap up tonight's session. So there's a little sneak peek into what we do when we are gathering for the six weeks of Eating with the Seasons. We are doing three weeks in 2020. We take a three-week break for the holidays, and then we pick it up again in January. So listen, uh, do you want to join in on Eating with the Seasons? We would love to have you. It is uh, six weeks of recipes, delicious things. Uh, everyone is invited to our table. Everything is paleo and grain-free and gluten-free, as a matter of fact. Uh, on principle, there are dairy-free options offered. And if we have some vegetarians in the mix, then we're going to just bump up more recipes and add more vegetarian recipes. One of the ways that we think about when it comes to eating with the seasons is we chase where the sun is stored. Mm. And in the winter, it sort of feels like sun is at a premium. There's not that much to go around. Ah, but there is. There actually is. There's an abundance of it. And where is sun stored in the wintertime? Major impetus is actually through animal products and animal fats. Now for a vegetarian and or vegan friends, then we can talk about other options. I have worked some into our program, but I will highlight them if people indicate that they're veggie or, veg or vegan. So everyone is invited to this table. It's not an exclusive group. If you would like some inspiration and new ways to think about how to move through the seasons when it comes to food, then I invite you to join us. And this is also uh, a, a way to think about um, approaching shifting with the seasons. When it comes to summer, you eat a super different way than you do in deep winter. And we get into why. We get into some of the traditional ways that some of our ancestors would have fed themselves and people on this part of the land, this part of the world. So let's bring it all together. It starts tonight. Registration's still open if you want to join us. And the cost is $120. And with that, you get six weeks. We'll do an elderberry syrup at the end of the series. Uh, we're talking medicinal mushrooms. We're talking... To cups of teas, spices to chase. Our focus this season is going to be on adrenals. Yeah, that is the season. Winter is to support adrenals and kidneys and bones. So if you are struggling with stress, if you are struggling with anxiety, if you have mood stuff, if you have hormonal imbalances or your adrenals are feeling super shot, or you have histamine issues, histamines is all adrenals, then this is something you may want to consider joining in. If you are struggling with osteoporosis, we'll be touching on that and talking those foods that will best support that. So yeah, if you want to come join us, if you have any questions, please get in touch. I'm trying to lay low on social media these days. I feel it's, uh, it's too hard for my heart to be on here a little bit. Uh, and I also don't want to contribute th to the bombardment of what you should be doing. But if you're looking for... I don't know, a community of like-minded people who want to find light and chase the sun, you can join us. You don't have to. But if you do, it'll be delicious, I promise you. Okay, may your day have a cup of hot chocolate somewhere. I'm gonna go make mine too to sweet. Bye!